common question that gets asked when using Blazor is how to use the button on click events. In this video, we'll show you how to use the button on click event in Blazor WebAssembly. In addition, we'll show you how to use the parameter attribute so you can implement a button on click event in another Razor component. We'll also have a look at some of the other HTML events that you can use in Blazor, and we'll also have a look at asynchronous calls. Very important if you're using an API. Now for more ASP.NET Core tutorials, visit roundthecode.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash roundthecode, and join our Discord server at roundthecode.com forward slash discord. So we're now going to have a look at adding a button on click event. Now in front of me, I've got a Blazor WebAssembly application. So the whole point of this is that we can enter our note, type something in there, press the submit button, and we can go ahead and save it. As you can see at the moment though, if I click on the submit button, it's not actually doing anything. So what we need to do is we need to bind the submit event. So when we submit a note, it actually displays that note on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and come out of this. So this is our Blazor WebAssembly application here. I'll talk you through some of the stuff that we've created so far. So we've created a note model here, and this is quite simple. It's just going to store the message that we're trying to save, the actual note, and what time it was created. And we've got this node list in Razor component here. This is the left hand side for the screen you just saw. On the left hand side here we've got a text area where we can actually put our note in there and we've got a submit button there as well. Then on the right hand side we've got our saved notes. Now all our saved notes are going to be saved in this notes list instance here. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go ahead and every time we create a note we're going to have to create a new instance inside this notes list so we've got somewhere to store it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to bind the comment, so the text that goes in this text area, we need to bind it to a property. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new property in here. I'm going to create a new string property and call it new comment. So from there what we're going to do is we're going to go back up here to our text area and what we can use in Blazor is we can use the bind attribute and we're going to bind it to the new comment. From there we're going to create a bind event for it as well and we're going to set that to on change. So what's going to happen here is that every time the comment text area is changed it will bind it to the new comment so we know what the value is going to be in this text area. Now that we've gone ahead and done that, what we need to do is we need to create a new method inside this Razor component here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to call it on submit note. We have to pass in a parameter of mouse event arguments or args. From here, we've already created a new instance of notes when this Razor component is initialized. So we can just go ahead and add a new instance of note to the list. So we create a new note and we just can put in the new comment like so. So it's binding to that new comment. We've already added the text in the text area. So we're just going ahead, creating a new instance of note and adding that comment. Next thing we need to do is just go ahead and empty the new comment. That will ensure that our text area is empty, otherwise it will still have the same text in there. So just in case we want to add another note, we'll have an empty text area where we can go ahead and do that. Final thing we need to do is we need to go up to the submit and we now need to add the on click. So take a note here, you need to add the at there. If you don't have add the actual at in front of it, it just stays the same red colour. We need to add the at at the beginning of it. We go in there and we just simply bind it to our on submit note method which we've created down here. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it's going to work for us. Okay so our Blazor WebAssembly application is now running so let's give that a test and see if it's actually going to save our notes or not. 
this is a test to see if it's working. Yes, as you can see, that's working for us. Let's just try another one. So we'll put in another test to see if it's working. There we go. You can see that's working. And you also noticed as well is that the text area is cleared once we've added the note to our list. So we're now going to go about using a button on click event as a parameter. Now to demonstrate this, what we're going to do is we're going to add a delete button to this listing of notes. Now if we go back into our Blazor WebAssembly application and we'll open up our note view component, we're going to add the delete button within inside this li tag. Now the problem with this is that we need to actually perform the actual deleting of the note within this note listing component. We need to go ahead and remove the instance of that note from this list. How do we go about doing that? The first thing we can do is we can create a new parameter and within that we're going to create a new event callback type passing in a generic type of mouse event arguments. And we're going to go ahead and call that on delete note. go to our li tag what we're going to do is we're going to create a new button of type submit and we're going to create a new on click event remember to add the at at the beginning and we're going to set it to our on delete note method that we've created down there so that's that done we now need to go back into our note listing component and we need to go ahead and create our new method. So we're going to create an on delete note. We're going to pass in a mouse event argument. And we're also going to pass in the note that we actually want to delete. So we're going to do a check here. We're going to get our notes instance and we're going to check whether that note appears in the notes list that we've got. like so. Now assuming that that note does exist and we wish to delete it because we're calling the on delete note method, we just go ahead and remove that. So we do notes.remove notes.first like that. So well, that's all very well and good, but that's not going to work at the moment. And that's the reason being is that we need to call our on delete note parameter within where we're actually using it in the note listing component. So to do that, we go ahead and we call the on delete note. We pass in the event like so. Then we call on delete note, pass in the event and the actual note. So that should be it. So let's give the Razor component, so the Blazor WebAssembly application a run and see if it's going to work. Okay, so our Blazor WebAssembly application is running. Let's go ahead and add some notes in. So let's add one note there and add another. So you can see already our delete button is what is appearing for us. Let's go ahead and see if it's actually going to work. So there you go, you can see we're now able to delete notes from our listing. So we're now going to have a look at using other HTML events. Now to demonstrate this, we're going to use the on mouse over and on mouse out events. What we're going to do is when we hover the mouse over a note, it's going to change the background color. And once we move the mouse away from it, it's going to change it back. So what we need to do is in the note view component, we need to go ahead and we need to create a new property. So we're going to create a new string property and we're going to call it class name. We're now going to go ahead and implement that class to our li. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our CSS file. So we're using CSS isolation in Blazor, which is available in .NET 5. And what this does is it allows us to add CSS files to a particular Razor component. 
For this instance, we've opened up the note view component, which corresponds with our li tag up there. So we're going to call the class highlight. And we're just going to set the background color of gray. So hashtag CCC. Let's go back in here. What we need to do now is we need to create a couple of methods. So we need to create an on mouse over, passing in the relevant argument. And what this is going to do is it's going to change the class name to highlight. Then we need to create another one. So if I go ahead and copy and paste that and just change the method to on mouse out. And we need to reset the class name. So we're going to set it to string empty. Final thing we need to do is we need to go up to our li tag and we need to go ahead and create our events in here. So we need to select the on mouse over. We need to bind it to our on mouse over method. Finally, we need to find our on mouse out event and bind it to our on mouse out method. So what should happen now is when we hover the mouse over a particular note, it would change the class name to highlight, which in theory should change the background color. Once we move the mouse away from it, it will reset the class and the background color should be the same color as it was before. Let's go ahead and run our Blazor WebAssembly application to see if that's actually working for us. So our Blazor WebAssembly application is running. Let's go ahead and add some notes again. We've added one there. You can see that's already working. Let's add a few more. So we've added three notes there. Let's hover over it. And as you can see, when we hover over it, it changes the background color to gray. And once we hover out from it, then it changes it back to how it was before. So we're now going to have a look at asynchronous event calls. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to show you how to create a method that's running particularly slow and see how the Blazor application runs. Now this is particularly useful if you're doing things like making API calls, because there's always going to be that sort of delay when calling a method and trying to get the result from an API call. So we're going to start it, and this is all being created synchronously. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a slight modification. We're going to put a two second delay in between actually adding the note and for it to display it on the screen. So we're going to go up to the top and we need to import the system diagnostics namespace into the Razor component. Now we're going to create a new instance of stopwatch and we're going to start the stopwatch. What we're going to do is we're going to create a while loop. And it's going to keep on looping for the first two seconds of the stopwatch. So there's going to be a two second delay here before we add our note to our list in and then it empties out the new comment. Now that we've done that, let's give our, Razor, our Blazor WebAssembly application a run and see what happens. So our Blazor WebAssembly application is now running. Let's go ahead and add a note. As you can see there, we've got the uh, two second delay before it appears on the screen. Let's add another one. So yeah, once again, you've still got the two second delay. Now let's go ahead and add another one. And at the moment, as you can see, it's highlighting every time we hover over a note. Let's see what happens though when we submit that. You can see we can't actually do anything. The whole application is locked because there's that delay. So that's not very good. So what we can do with that is we can change this to an asynchronous call. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new method. We're going to call it on submit note async. We're going to change the return type from void to task. And we're going to make the method asynchronous as well. From there, we don't need to use the stopwatch for this. 
all we need to do is we need to call the await task.delay, create a new time span of two seconds. The other thing we need to do is we need to change the binding in here. So if we go, so if we go up here, we're going to change this. We're going to change it. We're going to call an async, calling in our mouse event argument method. We're going to call the await on submit note async, passing in the event argument. So here we've got the await of task delay, we've got the two second delay there, and then it adds the note. So that's now what's calling from our submit button up here. Let's go ahead and run the application to see if it's going to work for us. So our Blazor WebAssembly application is running, so let's go ahead and add another note. As you can see there, we've got our two second delay. Let's go ahead and add another one. Once again, we've got the two second delay like so. Let's add another one and let's just see if we can actually hover over the notes whilst it's adding the note to the listing. So you can see as it was going ahead doing that two second delay, we were still able to hover over the notes. There's something to bear in mind, particularly if you're doing API calls, is if you've got a particular slow method, you need to go ahead and make it asynchronous so it doesn't lock the whole application. If you wish to download the code for this example, you can go to runthecode.com forward slash code hyphen examples. So that's how you go about implementing the button on click event in Blazor WebAssembly. And if you wish to use other HTML events, you can adopt a similar approach. So for example, if you're using the on blur event attribute, you can go ahead and do almost exactly the same thing as an on click event. Now thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.